Hey everybody. This is the Total Dissolve Solid Meter I use, or TDS meter. It's made by HM Digital. And I will put a link down below to this meter. It's very inexpensive. It tells you the total dissolved solids and gives you the temperature. And that's about all you really need. This one is a total dissolved solids and an electrical conductivity meter. And I really don't find the electrical conductivity meter necessary, at least not for my purposes. So instead of standing here having a conversation while we look at this boring old stuff, we're going to go over and have a look at my fish room, and we're going to talk a little bit about my experience with both the TDS meter and the EC meter, and why I use them, what I use them for, and why specifically I don't use the electrical conductivity meter. So hang on half a second. And we can continue here in the fish room where we have a much better view. Now, I thought about shutting this tank down so that we would get less glare on my tanks as we walked around the room, but I decided we can start here, and then if necessary, we can always shut this light off and we can go around and look at some of the other tanks while we discuss them. So, what a total dissolved solid meter is... It's pretty self-explanatory. It measures the total number of dissolved solids that are in the water. That's not a really um, specific number. It can be anything. It can be the nitrates. It can be ammonia. It can be mineral salts. It could be sugar if somebody spilled sugar into the tank. It can be anything that's dissolved into the water. So the total dissolved solid number, it's a number and it, you know, it's a number to look at and it tells you something about the tank, but you need a lot more information to really understand what that number means. You know, how much of those dissolved solids are nitrates? How much of them are calcium? How much of them are magnesium? There are other tests you need to do to find out the answers to those questions. Your total dissolved solid meter is not going to tell you that. It's simply going to give you a broad picture of the total dissolved number of everything that's in the tank. So, again, I don't use it for very much, but from time to time it's worth having a look just to see what's going on. If I am trying to paint that larger picture of what's going on in my tank, I think we will go ahead and turn this light off here. If I am trying to paint a bigger picture of what's going on in my tank, then I might use the total dissolved solid meter and I might compare it to my groundwater or my tap water uh, or something like that just to get some round numbers of what we're looking at. But it doesn't give you anything specific. So not too long ago I decided I was going to try to add a little bit of mineralization to my tank uh, to all of my tanks really at least several of them that were going to be experimental tanks and the reason I want to do that is I want to make sure the redox potential in my tanks is up to snuff so I'm not going to get into a long discussion about redox potential and all that right now but I started adding some minerals to my tanks in various ways and in order to start checking for them I wanted to find out again the redox potential so I decided I needed to use my electrical conductivity meter in order to figure this out and I mistakenly believed that the electrical conductivity meter was going to give me a number that would translate into my redox potential but it does not the electrical conductivity meter more or less gives you a number that is a translated number of your total dissolved solids. So if I were to ask somebody, how does a total dissolved solid meter work? They could say, oh, well, it measures the electrical conductivity of your water, and then it just converts that number into an actual parts per million number, and there's your TDS number. But if I was to ask you how an electrical conductivity meter works, 
Well, you can just as easily say, oh, well, it measures the total dissolved solids in your tank, and then it takes that number and it converts that number into an electrical reading, and it, it gives you a reading in microsiemens or, or micromoles. I'm not sure if it's micromoles, microsiemens or something else, depending on uh, which side of the pond you live on. My, my measurement tool um, is European, and it it's measures in microsiemens. But it doesn't matter because it's basically just a converted number of the total dissolved solids and vice versa. It doesn't really give you any new information because all it's doing is measuring the number of dissolved solids in your tank. And so I'll tell you the story of how I figured all this out the hard way. And that is, I didn't know a lot about the electrical conductivity meter, and so I decided, you know, I'm going to go ahead and do some research on this. I'm going to read about, you know, redox potential, and I'm going to read about electrical conductivity in the water and find out what all these terms mean, and so on and so forth. But first, let's have something to go on. You know, let's go around the room. Let's test a few of the tanks. Let's see what we're looking at, you know, see if everything makes sense to me so far. So I started checking tanks, and the first tank I checked was my 125 that we were just looking at, and I got a number, and I said, okay, and then I checked this tank, and I got a number that made sense compared to what I knew about the water and so on and so forth. This tank should have been similar to that tank, and so on and so forth, and I went around the room, and I kept checking tanks, and everything kept lining up about where I expected it to be based on these rough numbers and knowing what I had dissolved into the tanks and what I had not. Uh, for example, this tank does not have any treatment to the water. I'm not doing anything to add any mineralization to the water. So the electrical conductivity number I got on this tank was lower than it was on the other tanks where I have added minerals. And, I, you know, that makes sense to me. I've added these minerals that should increase the conductivity of the water. So I get a higher number in those tanks. There goes my action snail flash, probably getting ready to jump off that uh, leaf and leap to the bottom of the tank. So, so far so good. All of the numbers were making sense. I'm going around the room. I'm checking this tank. I'm checking that tank. I started by checking my brackish tank too. I did that early on just to give me a, a sort of contradictory number. I started with my freshwater tank and then I went and I checked my brackish tank and of course the brackish tank number was through the roof. It was 1300 and something or other. I don't even remember what the number was but it was 13 or 1500 or something like that. And then I went around the room, and then some of my other tanks were, you know, 450 or 500, and then a tank that I had added some minerals to might have been 600 or 750 or something. I don't know. Again, I'm just sort of pulling these numbers out of the air. Um, so everything was making sense and, and doing fine right up until I got to my 29 miscellaneous. I came over and I tested this tank, which does have but didn't at the time. I had just put some eggshells in this tank and they hadn't been in there very long, but the number I got was enormous. It was almost as high as it was in my brackish tank here, which again was like at least twice what all my other tanks were. If all my other, you know, this tank was sitting around 13 or 1500 microsiemens or whatever the measurement was. Again, I'm, I'm just kind of pulling this out of memory from a month ago. And so, you know, in my mind, like, there's the brick wall that I just crashed into. Or, you know, maybe you want to imagine hearing the, the needle screech across the record if you're old enough. Uh, even if you're young, you probably at least know that sound. Um, you know, like, what's, what's going on here? This is a freshwater tank. I've barely done anything to treat the water, and yet I'm getting this electrical conductivity number that's through the roof. And so I said, okay, now it's time to go upstairs and take these numbers and see if I can make sense with what I start reading. And, of course, if I had spent five minutes reading before I did all this testing, I would have known what to expect when I began doing the testing. And it's just what I said. It's that the electrical conductivity is just a different way of measuring the total dissolved solids. And this tank, of course, is the tank that I do the least amount of maintenance on, the least amount of water changes. And I guarantee if we check the nitrates in this tank, the vial would be bright red. I'm sure there's lots of phosphorus in this tank. Um, there, there, or, you know, there's all kinds of stuff going on in this tank just because it's been a long time since I've done a water change on it. 
And so it all came back in line and made sense. But I suddenly also realized the pretty much utter uselessness of the electrical conductivity meter because in the process of reading about all this and trying to find out about oxygen redox potential, um, I basically found out that if you want to know what your tank's redox potential is, you've got to buy a meter that tests for redox potential. It's a different kind of measurement altogether, and you can't find that out by testing how many dissolved solids you've got in your water. So, for me, as far as I'm concerned, I wasn't really having issues with my fish in the first place. I've added some minerals to the tank, so the water is better than it was. If it was good enough before, and it's better now, it's just not one of those things I really need to worry about. When it comes to the redox potential, you do still need to keep your water... Um, you, you do need redox potential in your water. Think of it like a battery being charged and you basically just can't let the battery run all the way down. As long as you're doing normal, reasonable water changes, you just don't have to worry about that kind of stuff. As long as you've got some sort of mineralization in your water, you just don't really have to worry about that kind of stuff. If you're keeping specialty fish, uh, this tank is a good example. I've got somewhere in here, I've got a chocolate garami. And chocolate garamis actually prefer water that has very low mineralization to it. So you would want a lower redox potential in the tank with the chocolate garami in it. So, you know, in this case, I'm sort of balancing it out. I have added a little bit of mineralization to this tank, but not very much. Um, I have some fish that I, I think need it, but some don't in this tank. And again, the long and short of it is, as long as I'm doing reasonable water changes and, you know, I think I stay on top of doing my water changes frequently enough that I'm not going to have to worry about, you know, my, my redox potential being depleted or my water just being, you know, we'll call it flat water that's just sort of dead water, whatever you want to call it. But that's what you get when you're dealing with what a lot of people refer to as old tank syndrome. Um, you know, you'll hear people often talk about how you can set up a water change free tank and they always seem to be concerned about the nitrates and keeping the nitrates low and as long as they keep the nitrates low, they think everything's fine and that's not necessarily how it works. If you're not remineralizing your water, you will still suffer from old tank syndrome over time because the old tank syndrome is not a buildup of nitrates it's a depletion of your tanks redox potential and the water just goes flat and dead and you that's your old tank syndrome right there so again I'm not going to spend any money to go out and buy a special meter just to find out what the redox potential in my tanks are I'm able to do water hardness tests and that tells me how much calcium and magnesium I've got in my water I can do the TDS meter Again, it's just a different version of the EC meter. It just depends on how you prefer reading the number. I have sort of grew into the hobby reading a TDS and a parts per million kind of number. That's what I'm used to. That's what I'm familiar with. And that's all I need, really. So, you know, that's pretty much my story on why I don't bother with the electrical conductivity meter. And even with the TDS meter, eh, you know, like I said, it's a number. It, it serves its purpose. I certainly recommend having one. Again, I'll put a link down below. You can get them for $15, $16. You know, it's worth having. It's, it's good for having information available, but it doesn't give you a lot of really specific information, and an electrical conductivity meter doesn't really give you any different information. It's more or less six of one, half dozen the other. So thanks for listening to me ramble on about all that stuff. Hope you got something out of that somewhere along the lines. Make sure you subscribe. You never know what you're going to get with me. And then, of course, don't forget this one here is my 125-gallon native tank. So thanks again for watching. I'll see you real soon in the next one.